In just a few days, more than 200 earthquakes have rattled Southern California, shaking towns from Palm Springs to the Salton Sea. At first, scientists thought it was another routine swarm. But when they looked deeper, they noticed something strange. Several of these quakes were happening far below the usual fault line, in a zone that hasn't moved in centuries, and it's not behaving like anything they've recorded before. That discovery has reignited the question Californians have feared for decades. Is the big one finally getting close? Because new research suggests the San Andreas Fault might be under more stress than ever, and part of it may already be slipping. Today, we'll uncover what's really happening beneath California, and what scientists just found that changes everything. Over the past week, the ground beneath Southern California has been trembling almost nonstop. More than 200 earthquakes have been detected near the Salton Sea and Brawley Seismic Zone, a region known for its tangled web of minor faults that sit just south of the San Andreas Fault itself. At first, it looked like a typical pressure release, something Californians are used to seeing every few years. But this time, the numbers didn't line up. Many of the quakes were clustered unusually deep, more than 12 kilometers down, where the crust is supposed to be locked solid. That alone made researchers take a closer look. Then came something even stranger. Several of the quakes didn't follow the normal east-west fault pattern. Instead, they curved toward the main San Andreas, as if the smaller faults were feeding energy directly into it. That's when the concern began, because the last time scientists saw this kind of stress transfer pattern, it was followed by a major quake in the same zone. The swarm has now spread across a 40-kilometer stretch, nudging dangerously close to the southern segment of the San Andreas, the very section that hasn't ruptured in more than 300 years. And here's where it gets unsettling. Seismographs are picking up faint tremors beneath the locked fault, in layers that shouldn't even be moving. Whatever's happening under Southern California right now, it's not behaving like a normal swarm. And that anomaly might be the biggest clue yet about what's coming next. Running for nearly 800 miles through California, the San Andreas Fault is the invisible border that built, and could one day destroy, the state. It's not a single crack, but a network of fractures where the Pacific Plate slides northwest past the North American Plate, grinding inch by inch every year. To most people, it looks like ordinary land, but beneath highways, suburbs, and farmland, the crust is under enormous tension, two massive slabs of earth pushing against each other with unstoppable force. Geologists divide the fault into three parts. The northern segment tore apart San Francisco in 1906. The central section creeps slowly, releasing pressure in small quakes. But the southern segment, stretching from the San Bernardino Mountains to the Salton Sea, has been eerily silent for more than three centuries. That silence is what scares scientists the most. Every decade, strain builds, like winding a spring tighter and tighter. And based on slip rate calculations, the southern section is now well past its historical release window. To put it bluntly, the San Andreas isn't overdue for a major rupture. It's decades overdue. Researchers estimate that when it finally breaks, the shaking could last nearly two minutes, unleashing energy equivalent to hundreds of nuclear detonations. But here's the strange part. Despite that pressure, new readings suggest parts of the fault are moving differently than expected, and that's leading some scientists to believe something deeper may already be shifting. As scientists sifted through the latest swarm data, they noticed something that didn't make sense. Buried deep within the readings were low-frequency tremors, faint vibrations happening nearly 20 kilometers below the surface, far deeper than the crust that usually fractures. At first, they thought it was noise, interference from passing storms, or instrumentation drift. But after cross-checking the data across multiple stations, the pattern held. The ground beneath the southern San Andreas Fault wasn't quiet. It was humming. These signals didn't look like standard quakes. They were smoother, slower, almost like the fault was grinding in slow motion. Geophysicists call them deep tremor bursts, subtle slips that often appear months before a locked fault begins to loosen and the timing couldn't be worse. The tremors are concentrated near the same locked zone that's expected to generate the next magnitude 7.8 or higher rupture. To make things even more unsettling, new satellite data from early 2025 shows a narrow strip of crust near the Salton Sea has lifted several centimeters in just a few weeks, 
proof that the plates are shifting vertically as well as sideways. That combination, deep tremor plus uplift, is rare. It's the kind of signal scientists usually see right before a major fault readjusts itself, but no one knows if this means the fault is relieving pressure or quietly preparing to fail. Once researchers confirmed the tremor signals were real, the next question was simple but terrifying. What exactly are they showing us? By layering seismic data over GPS deformation maps, scientists notice that the new quakes aren't random. They're forming a chain arcing north from the Salton Sea toward the San Jacinto Fault, one of the most active in California. That's important because the San Jacinto and San Andreas Faults run almost parallel. When stress builds on one, it can transfer directly to the other, like two gears locked together. In other words, this swarm might not be releasing energy, it might be redirecting it. A 2025 USGS analysis found that small quakes in the Brawley zone are relieving only a fraction of the stress. The rest is being funneled north, straight into the locked southern San Andreas. If that's true, the system is doing the exact opposite of what everyone hoped. Instead of calming down, it's loading up. And when the southern San Andreas finally snaps, all that stored strain could turn a normal rupture into a chain reaction, triggering nearby faults one after another. That possibility has scientists quietly watching every new tremor, because each one could be the final piece in a pattern we're not supposed to see until it's too late. If the southern San Andreas fault were to rupture today, the shaking wouldn't just be strong, it would be relentless. According to the USGS shakeout simulation, a magnitude 7.8 quake would tear through the fault at nearly 2 miles per second, unleashing violent motion that could last up to two full minutes. Picture it highways twisting, glass towers swaying like reeds, freeways crumbling mid-commute as shockwaves ripple through Los Angeles, Riverside, and San Bernardino. Older concrete buildings, the ones never fully retrofitted, would fail first. Gas lines would rupture, fires would spread, and in some low-lying areas, the ground itself would liquefy, swallowing cars and buildings as if they were sinking in wet cement. Power grids could take weeks to restore. Water mains and fiber networks, months. The total damage? Experts estimate $200 billion or more, making it one of the costliest natural disasters in US history. But here's the part that keeps scientists up at night. The longer the fault stays silent, the worse that first break will be. Every extra year adds more strain, like another twist on a wound spring. And if the stress spreads to neighboring faults, it might not stop with one quake. It could become a cascade event where one rupture triggers another and the shaking doesn't end when the ground stops moving. So how close are we really? For decades, the big one has been treated like folklore, something that will happen someday, but not today. But new data from 2025 suggests someday might be getting closer than anyone expected. A recent USGS stress model shows that the southern San Andreas Fault has accumulated nearly 6 meters of slip deficit. That's the amount of movement it should have released since its last rupture in the 1600s. Instead, it's been locked tight. Each year, the Pacific Plate keeps pushing northwest by about 35 millimeters, squeezing more pressure into the zone. If that strain were suddenly released, the quake could exceed magnitude 8.0, far stronger than the standard Big One scenario. And now, the deep tremors, the uplift near the Salton Sea, and the swarm clustering from 2024 through early 2025 all line up with one disturbing pattern. The fault is approaching its breaking point. Scientists can't predict the exact moment it will give way, but they can agree on one thing. It's not a question of if, only how soon. And that window? According to the latest California earthquake forecast, it's within our lifetime. For decades, Californians have lived with a quiet awareness that the ground beneath them isn't stable, that one day the fault line running through their state will wake up. But after the latest swarm of 200 quakes, the deep tremors, and the uplift near the Salton Sea, that awareness is starting to feel like a countdown. What makes this moment different is how many puzzle pieces are suddenly falling into place. For the first time, scientists are detecting deep tremor signals, ground deformation, and stress transfers, all happening at once. It's as if the Earth itself is trying to warn us, one vibration at a time. And yet, the mystery remains. If the big one truly is getting close, where will it start? 
Some researchers think it'll begin at the southern tip of the San Andreas, where the fault dives beneath the Salton Sea, a locked section that hasn't moved in centuries. Others suspect a rupture could start farther north, near the junction with the San Jacinto Fault, right under millions of people in Los Angeles. Or maybe the signals we're seeing are something else entirely, the crust shifting in ways we still don't understand. So, what do you think? If the big one really is coming, where will it begin? South near the Salton Sea or closer to Los Angeles? Drop your theory in the comments below. I'll be reading through and pinning the most interesting ones. Because when it comes to the San Andreas, every clue matters. And the next quake may already be riding its warning beneath our feet.